hi everyone welcome to the last class of corporate valuation do well to follow me on my social media platforms all the links will be in the description box so in this class i said we're going to conclude on the last two methods of corporate valuation that's the value based method and the option based method right but before that i saw a question that we would need to solve so let us solve that question then we go to those last two methods all in this class right so i'll put it on the screen Lehman Co. has a forecast revenue of 51,952,000 for the next year and its operating profit margin will be 30% for the foreseeable future. After the first year, the growth rate in the revenue will be 5.8% per year for the following three years. It can be assumed that the tax allowable depreciation is equivalent to the amount of investment needed to maintain the current operational levels. That line is very important. However, Lehman will require additional investment in assets of 513,000 in the first year and then 18 cobble per one naira increase in the sales revenue for the next three years. It is anticipated that after the forecast four year period, the free cash flow growth rate will be 2.9% to perpetuity. Lehman has issued share capital of 15 million with each share having 25 cobble per value. It also has debt outstanding with a book value of 35 million and a market value of 40 million. The tax rate is 28% and layman's work weighted average cost of capital has been estimated at 9%. Required estimate the market value of each share in layman co. That is asking you to get the market price per share. Now reading this question, which method do you think you should use? Think about it. Layman co. First of all, from reading this question, you can deduce that you're using cash flow basis, right? Because they gave you um, the forecast revenue and they gave you the operating profit margin, okay? Now, you can also see that it is a two-staged valuation. And that's because they told you that it is anticipated that after the forecast four-year period. So, there's first of all a four-year period that is the planning phase, right? That is the first stage. I told you in the previous class. And then the stability phase. Is now from year five to infinity right so now let's start solving for those operating cash flows year one year two year three year four revenue is 51 million nine hundred and fifty two thousand so let's write five one right do you understand Um, they said that after the first year, the growth rate in revenue will be 5.8%. So where is our calculator? You are going to increase the revenue by 5.8%, right? That is 1.058 multiplied by this, 51,952. That will give you 54,965. Then you multiply again by 1.058. That will give you 58,153. 61,526. Okay, then they said the operating profit margin will be 30% for the foreseeable future. So operating profits. So you calculate 30% of all of this. So that will give you 18458. You know, you close this one. 30% of this 0.3 times 58153, 17446, 16490, 15586. So that's our operating profit. Um, follow the question. He says it can be assumed that tax allowable depreciation mm -hmm, is equivalent to the amount of investment required to maintain current operational levels. It means that don't do anything about tax allowable depreciation and don't do anything about working capital. You know, working capital is the amount required to maintain current operational levels. So if they tell you that tax allowable depreciation, which is capital allowance, is equal to maybe 500. And they're telling you that that same amount is also equal to what you use to maintain current operational levels. 500 also. It means these two have cancelled each other, right? Because the tax allowable depreciation is like plus 500. Then the amount you need for working capital is like minus 500. Do you understand? Or minus 500 plus 500. So it cancels it out. I don't know if you understand. That's the essence of that line. So you can just ignore. Do you understand? However, Lehman will require additional investment in assets of 513,000 in the first year. In the first year, additional investment in assets. So this is your operating cash flow. Then investment, additional investment. Okay. In year one, they said this is what 513,000. So they will spend 513,000. Now in year 12, you know what you're supposed to spend. And then 18 cobble 
per one naira increase in sales revenue for the next three years let's try and digest it in the first year and then that is going forward they will require 18 kobo per one naira increase in sales revenue okay i understand so for year two the sales increase between year two and year one can you see that there's a sales increase so for every increase you'll require additional 18 kobo per one naira 18 kobo per one naira means 18 kobo per 100 kobo 100 kobo is one naira that is 18 percent increase that's what they're saying so for sales to increase you need an additional investment of 18 percent okay so that's our increase in sales that's year two sales minus year one sales this is the sales okay not what i was touching now here this is the sales so 54,965 minus 51,952. So the increase is 3013. Then you multiply it by 18%. Okay? And that will give you 542. So it's 542 that is the additional investment here. Can you see how they just took the question? Then the difference between this and this, you multiply 18%, and that's what you have here. The difference between this and this, you multiply 18%, and that's what you have here. Okay? Let's do that. 574. 607 right so we already have deducted our investment that is investing cash flow right so when you cast this what will you have you have your free cash flow to fair by saying operating cash minus investing cash right now that you have your free cash flow to fair what are you supposed to you're supposed to discount so you discount using work because it's free cash flow to fair and what is your work in the question they said layman's weighted average cost of capital has been estimated at nine percent 1.09 raised to power minus 1, 0 0.917, 0 0.842, 0 0.772, 0 0.708. When you multiply this by this, this by this, you get your present values. So when you do that, you get it to be 37,595. Add your three zeros that you've abbreviated, okay? So this is the value of the company for the first four years. Now you do for year five to infinity, right? Please ignore any noise. There's a construction close to this place. So they said um, it is anticipated that after the forecast for year period, its free cash flow growth rate will be 2.9% to perpetuity. So the free cash flow growth rate, that is this year, first um, free cash flow, where is it? This one, 12683. The rate at which it will be 2.9. Because you can see that this one was growing from year one, it grew to year two. It grew to this, it grew to this. So definitely this one too will grow. Now they are saying that the growth will be at 2.9% to perpetuity. So you, are, you now want to do the second stage of valuation, right? So you want to do from year five to perpetuity, that is to infinity. So how do you discount? You discount the free cash flow. So the free cash flow at the start of year five now will definitely be 12, 2, 6, 3. You know the formula now. Free cash flow to FEM. You introduce your growth, one plus G. Hmm? You discount over work minus g that is your discount factor minus g okay if you are discounting free cash flow to equity you need to be divided by ke minus g 12683 into 1 plus g the growth is 29 and um, the growth is 2.9 percent that's 0 0.029 over the work the work is 9 percent minus 2.9 percent so you multiply by what discount factor of preceding year that's for year four that's 0 0.708 right the preceding year is year four from when the annuity started okay so you put all of this in your calculator and you have your answer to be 151477 million right in naira so it means the value of the company is this plus this and that will give you 189072 million so this is the value of the company so value of the equity will be equal to value of company minus your liabilities right so are you paying debtors anything they said um it also has a debt outstanding with a book value of 35 million and a market value of 40 million you pick the market value okay book value is historical so it's 40 million that is relevant so you say value of equity is equal to value of company 189.07 million minus 40 million okay and that will give you a value of equity to be 149.072 million right now to get your what they ask you to get estimate the market value of each share in Lehman. you just divide this by the number of shares how many shares said Lehman has an issue Lehman has issued share capital of 15 million with each share having with each share having 25 couple per, okay and that's very fast okay so you just say the issued shares what 15 million naira 
divided by 25 kobo per share, right? So that's 0 naira, 25 kobo. So you put this in your calculator, 15 divided by 0 0.25, that will give you 60 million. So it's the 60 million shares you bring. I hope you understand this. This is the total value of the equity, and this is how much it is trading per share. Okay, you know, amount per share times number of shares will give you this. So to get number of shares is total amount divided by not, um, this in per share. What you can do is to say amount per share 0 0.25 times number of shares. What you are looking for x is equal to 15 million, right? Then you make x sort of formula 15 million divided by 0 0.25. That's how we got this. So you divide this by 60 million shares, and that will give you. Let me put that in my calculator. I'm trying to rush because of um, the other class. I want to finish. I want us to finish it in this class. That's the value based method and the option based method. So you have 2.48. So you have 2, 2 naira 48 copper per share. So that's the value of Lehman's um, shares. They said estimate the market value of each share in Lehman, and that's the answer. Okay. So um, let's quickly go to the value-based method and option-based method is actually examinable that's why i'm doing it so if not of course i will not even waste my time doing that so it's examinable and i'm here to help as usual so the fourth method is the value-based method value-based method and the fifth method is the option-based method so under the value-based method you have sub methods that's three methods we have the economic value added we have the market value added and we have the shareholders value added right um option we'll go to option based so under the economic value added this one is saying value the company based on the economic value added right that's ever you've been heard of ever before it's more of a performance measure this is one that is more of a valuation measure okay you know they always use this ever for to, to evaluate managers if you're a financial manager you know this so the formula for calculating ever to value your company is adjusted no part that's adjusted net operating profit after tax hmm? less your capital charge capital charge and that's your ever does it make sense? So your ever can be negative. You cannot have, it's possible that the company does not have any economic value that it has added. So to get your capital charge, you say work multiplied by capital employed. Okay? Work multiplied by capital employed. That's how you get your capital charge. And to get your adjusted net operating profit after tax, it's basically um, adding back your depreciation, non-cash items. I don't know if you remember what I explained in the previous class on free cash flow to firm when you are trying to get your operating profit right so you should try and stay on these classes watch it like once twice write out something when you're watching not that you're just watching it's like a class it's just like it's virtual do you understand so the adjusted net operating profit after tax means a net operating profit after tax that you are just adjusting okay so you need to add back depreciation add back non-cash items you need to add back interest if it has been deducted because it should not be deducted okay and then you let your capital charge and this is formula to get your capital charge when we are solving question i'll expand more on this formula on this format okay let's go to the mva so the market value added it's saying value a company based on the market value and then it is, what it is saying is that you should discount the economic value added okay so once you get your economic value added you just discount this with work that's the valuation and then the share um, value added is saying value a company based on the value that has been added to shareholders. So you want to know the equity value at the beginning, at year beginning, minus the equity value, right, at year end. So the difference is saying that what is the value that has been added to shareholders over a period of time. Very, very simple method. Okay, but this is ever... Is, it can actually be common and they can ask you for the advantages yeah i've seen a question like that advantages and disadvantages of ever advantage can be that it is easy to calculate simple to understand it can be easily communicated to managers it is used as a um, performance evaluation measure it is used to value a business i mean you already know all of that but what are the disadvantages number one disadvantage with ever is the fact that it can be complex okay when you are trying to adjust your ignore the noise when you are trying to adjust your net operating profit after tax it can be very complex another disadvantage is that it's not really suitable for small companies okay so small companies now especially in terms of the capital charge for example a capital charge of a new company is going to be very high because the capital employed in the first year can be as high as 
maybe 100 million that, that i mean that figure is relative but i'm saying compared to a company that has been running for a number of years that is now stable the capital charge will not be as high as a new company so for a small company a new company a new company not a small company for a new company ever might be inappropriate to value a new company another disadvantage is historical figures you are using historical figures here you know whatever makes up these adjusted net operating profit after tax are all historical so i'm sweating please like my video like my video okay two questions i want to solve two questions on that i'll just solve one the board of SS are trying to drive the performance for the benefit of their shareholders. This is a new experience for many at SS, having been in public sector until four years ago. In order to try to better communicate the objective of maximizing shareholders' wealth, the board have decided to introduce economic value added as the key performance indicator. The finance director has asked you to calculate ever for the company based on the following financial information for the year ending 30th December. 2012. They gave you this information. You can see it on the screen. Revenue, operating cost, operating profit, finance charges, profit before tax, tax at 25%, profit after tax. Then they gave you notes. Capital employed for 2011 and 2012 are 637 and 655 million respectively. They gave you the total operating cost. What they include, what is inside that total operating cost. You can see it. Depreciation. That one you will add back. Can you see? Provision for doubt for the research and development, other non cash items. Then they said the economic depreciation is assessed to be 83 million in 2012. Economic depreciation includes any appropriate amortized adjustments. Then they said in previous years, it can be assumed that economic and accounting depreciation were the same. I don't know if I mentioned that there's economic depreciation and there's um, accounting depreciation, right? And you should add back accounting depreciation. That's one that is not even accepted. You must add it back. Then you deduct economic depreciation. Okay? So you see that's when I'm solving this. But they've told you that it can be assumed that the economic and the accounting depreciation were the same. So adding something and deducting it is just like don't add it. The effect is zero, right? So number four, tax is the cash paid in the current year. That is nine million. And an adjustment of 0 0.5 million for deferred tax. So deferred tax is not recognized it's not relevant because different tax is not an actual cash movement you know what different tax is right it's not an actual cash movement so it's in nine million the actual cash paid on tax that was relevant okay um they said the provision for doubtful debt was 4.5 million on the 2012 statement of financial position number six research and development is not capitalized in the account when you don't capitalize something it means they expensed it, right so you do what you add it back why are you expensing it it's not an operational cash, it's not something that happens in the normal course of activity, so it should be added back. Do you understand? Um, it relates to a new project that will be developed over five years. That's capital in nature, and it's expected to be of long-term benefit to the company. That's capital in nature, so it should not be um, expensed, it should be capitalized, right? 2012 is the first year of this project. Cost of capital of SS, equity 16%, debt pre-tax 5%, that's the cost, cost of debt, cost of equity, to estimate work, okay? Then they said the gearing, that's... The gearing of SS is 40% equity and 60% debt. Companies get, right? So they said, required, evaluate the performance of SS using EVA. You see, they said performance because most times EVA is used to evaluate performance. It's the MVA that when you now discount your EVA, that way you now get um, the value of the company. So let's solve this question and see if we can solve another one before we go to option based method. I know some of you are even tired of class safe. Like, please, once you're watching this class, just grab something and eat, okay? Because it's not easy to learn. You use a lot of energy once you are using your brain. So as you are grabbing something to eat, please like my video. Like and share with anybody that you know that will find it useful. If you gain value from here, you should share with others, right? So the company is SS. SS. They said we should evaluate the performance of the company using ever so you write evaluation uh, using ever don't just start baby i'm starting now. <laughs> so the first thing to do ask yourself ever what's the formula hmm? you state it is what adjusted net i don't have time adjusted net operating profit after tax right less your capital charge 
So you need to go and get your adjusted this. You need to go and get your capital charge. When you cast, that's what you get as your ever. But to get this one call, you go and walk. Right? Workings one. So you come to your workings. Workings one. You want to get your adjusted notebooks. So you check your question. What are you adjusting? You're adjusting operating profits. Add what needs to be added back and deduct what needs to be deducted. Operating profit. You pick your is in millions. Okay, they gave us the figures in millions, so put it in millions. So operating profit is what 68 million. From the notes, you know what to add back. You said depreciation, you add it back. Okay, depreciation. That's the accounting depreciation because they said total operating costs include depreciation. And our operating cost is here in the profit or loss. And who prepares that accountant? So this is the accounting depreciation. So you add back the depreciation, that's 59. Add it back, okay. What else is a non cash item? Provision for doubtful debt. Is it an actual cash movement? No, add it back. Provision, how much is that? Two. Then, research and development that they've already expensed. You add it back, okay. So, research and development, and that's what 12. 12. Then, other non cash item, as you can see, other non cash item, you add it back, and that's what seven. So, once you add all of this back, you should push up the profits back. Hmm? And that will give us 148. 148. Okay. Now, what should you less? You should less your economic depreciation. See, they said economic depreciation is assessed to be 83 million in 2012. Okay. It's accounting depreciation that is allowed, but economic depreciation, once it's given to you, you should deduct it. Okay. So you deduct or you less economic depreciation. And told you that it's 83 million. Hmm? 83 million. You are deducting that. You know, you picked operating profits. It has not been taxed, okay? So you need to pay tax. It's a compulsory cash flow. The tax is cash paid in the current year, which is 9 million. So that one you have your profit or loss of 9.5 million is not the right thing. It's 9 million that is the actual cash movement. The 0 0.5 is um, deferred tax. So you less only 9 million. The next thing you will deduct is your tax savings. It's tax savings on what? On interest, okay? That's 25% times. How much is your interest that was paid? They grow today as finance charge. Finance charge 23 million. Okay, so that's 25% of 23 million. Put that in your calculator. 0.25 times 23, and that's 5.75. So you deduct 5.75 also. So if you cast this, I think that's all. Yep, yep, yep. You know why we're deducting tax savings? We're deducting tax savings because there is no tax savings. Okay, so any tax savings that feels like it's been added, no tax savings is an inflow. It's an inflow effect. It's not an actual cash movement, but it's an inflow effect, implying that you're not paying as much tax because interest is a tax deductible item. So because in this operating profit of 68, interest is still inside, meaning that if interest is still inside, interest was not exempted from tax. Does it even make sense? Yeah, it does. So if you cast this, you have your adjusted no part. What we are looking for? Adjusted no part. Net operating profit after tax. So that's 148 minus all of this. And that will give you 50.25 million, right? So you already have this adjusted number, put it there, 50.25 million. Now, less your capital charge. So your capital charge, you go and do it in workings too also because they didn't give you straight away that this is your capital charge. So let's solve capital charge. Capital charge, right? And what's your capital charge? Your capital charge is your work multiplied by capital employed, right? Now, what is your capital employed? Because you have to know your capital employed. They, give you any question. they won't give it to you straight away. Okay, they said capital employed for 2011 and 2012 are 637 and 657 respectively. So it means that 2012 capital employed is 657 million. But on this capital employed of 2012, you need to do some adjustments, okay? Because the issue is that some things have actually been deducted or some things have been added to corrupt this capital employed like all those provisions for doubtful debt you know if it is being treated in the profit or loss there's also a provision for it in where in your balance sheet right you also put provision for bad debt in balance sheet it also affects the debtor's value so all those things have reduced your capital employed basically your assets okay so opening capital employed is what 657 657 million okay so is there any adjustment is there anything here 
that you think would have affected your capital employed look at all those non-cash items first of all even if you are not sure of anyone you're sure of the non-cash item right other non-cash item of seven million sorry for the noise so you add it back because it has been deducted add other non-cash item of seven million which other thing um research and development was not taken to balance sheet it was expense so you don't touch it it was not it did not increase the capital employed it never increased the asset because it was never treated as an asset it was treated as an expense right so the next thing is your provision for doubtful debts you know this one was other non-cash item the next thing is your what provision for doubtful debts now this provision uh look at what they said they said in 2011 it was 0 0.5 then in 2012 it is 2 million 0 0.5 million in 2011 and 2 million in 2012 all right so another thing that you would have deducted because this is the end but another thing that you would have deducted would be economic depreciation and um accounting depreciation but since they've told you that um in the previous years it can be assumed that economic and accounting depreciation were the same so if you add back accounting depreciation and you deduct your economic depreciation there will be no effect okay let me go over it again so to get your capital employed you need to start with your opening capital employed for 2012 okay and the opening capital employed for 2012 is 637.0 Sorry, I wrote 607. 637.0. 2012 opening capital employed was 2011's year end capital employed. You know, capital employed at the beginning of the year is not the same as the capital employed at the end of the year. Or let's just call it assets, okay? Because capital employed is the assets you're using to run the business. So the asset value at the beginning is not the asset value at the end. That's just the concept. So you need to pick the opening capital employed in 2012. And that's 2011's balance. That's why they gave you 2011's balance. Sorry, that was a mistake, right? So you need to now adjust. So definitely, things will happen to these assets. They will be utilized. There will be some additions and some deductions. But there are some that are not justifiable. This provision also, hmm? you need to add it back because it has been deducted. So you have like corrupted the um, opening capital employed. So now we are trying to get the adjusted closing because normally, for what you have done is to just pick the 657 that's for 2012. But you need to adjust it, and to adjust it, you need to pick the opening balance, right? And adjust it 637 plus 7 plus 2.5 that's 646.5 million. So this is your capital employed for 2012. Then you multiply by your work because you're trying to get capital charge. You multiply by your work now you're not giving your work but you're giving the information to calculate your work and remember the work formula is cost of equity times equity proportion plus post-tax cost of debt times debt proportion that's equity over equity plus debt okay so cost of equity here is 16 percent multiplied by equity post equity proportion here is 40 percent that's 0 0.4 plus cost of debt is that pre-tax so you need to do the post tax that's five percent into what's the tax rate 25 percent one minus 0 0.25 times debt proportion which is 60 percent 60 percent that's 0 0.6 right so you put all of this in your calculator you know this cost of equity times equity proportion cost of debt times debt proportion okay so that's 16 times 0 0.4 that's 6.4 percent plus five times 0.75 times 0.6 that's 2.25 percent so you add these two together to get your work and that's 8.65 percent so that's your work and that's what you use to multiply the capital employed so multiply by 646 646.5 and that'll give you 55.92 55.92 your capital charge is even more than your adjusted no part i know that you're supposed to deduct it right when you deduct capital charge from adjusted net operating profit after tax, that's when you get your ever economic value added, right? So if you deduct that from 50.25, you have 5.67, negative of 5.67. So there is no economic value added. It's even a loss that is added to them. In this business, no economic value added, okay? What they say is this, evaluate the performance of SS using ever. So SS performance is indicating a loss. Therefore, there is no economic value added. Simple. Um, we're supposed to solve another question, which is, um, let me see. It's a very simple question. So I'll just skip it and we'll go to option based method. Okay. Number five option based. The option based method. That's the final method, the last method in um, corporate valuation. So, what is option based method? This one does not have sub method. 
what he's saying is there's a relationship between equity holders and debt holders and the relationship is the business so there's an old guy his name is merton hmm? his name is merton you know this all these names now merton 19 whatever whatever and what he said is that if equity holders want to own the business all they need to do is to pay off the debt holders okay so as long as there's debt holder in the business as long as there's debt in the business the equity holders do not own the business all alone that's just the concept okay so if equity holders can pay off debt holders, it means the business will belong to equity holders only. So it means that equity holders have a call option. Okay? Equity holders have a call option. I'm supposed to have explained options in investment appraisal before you're seeing this class. But because I've gotten a lot of messages like, Tolu, please do this topic, do that topic, do this topic, do that topic. And I'm like, let us solve this thing in a way that you would understand. Because I'm not going to solve any question on this, so I should have solved it in option class in investment appraisal another person do forex do this one investment appraisal is even very important guys if you're studying for icon i don't know whatever course whatever professional exam you're studying for so this option i've already explained what option is in the money option out of the money option at the money option okay so what they are saying is that equity holders have a call option and call option is buy okay so an option is a right but not an obligation to buy or sell an asset at a future date okay so you can decide to exercise your option or not you can decide that i will buy or i will not buy so to calculate the call option you use a particular formula which is actually usually given in your exam question you don't have to learn it okay so that formula is c equals s n d one minus e e minus r t n d two okay so this is the formula that you use and i actually explained all these things in my investment appraisal is it class 10 or i can't even remember the option price in under investment appraisal as explained it there but the variables here are different right so your s your e your r your t you need to know them even this nd1 i'll give you the formula nd2 so this um s here is your asset okay net asset which is your total asset minus your current liabilities because for equity holders to exercise this option for you to say you want to own the business alone it means that from the total assets of the company you are able to pay off your liabilities i mean if you can pay off your liabilities then you can exercise your option because if you can pay off your liabilities that's a gain so you can own the business let's say your total asset is 100 million and your liabilities let's say 40 million it means that there's a 60 million gain which confers ownership to the equity holders only right so this when, when you have this gain it is in the money option okay that's what they call in the money option but let's say the liabilities the debt holders they need 120 million it's not like there's a loss right of 20 million this is out of the money option at this point the shareholders will not exercise their rights okay so the e here is the fair value of present value of cash flows of bond okay basically what the, what belongs to the debt holder then the r is the risk free rate it sees the time to redemption maybe you say it's five years to redemption that is it the debt years the number of the debt years maybe you say five years to redemption time to redemption of bonds right then this nd1 to calculate it you use your natural distribution i've already ex explained it in that option or maybe i'll upload that one before this one i don't know um so your nd1 is natural log s over e plus r plus 0 0.5 standard deviation square multiplied by t over this root t so this is the formula to get your d1 then to get your d2 the formula is also here see d1 minus standard deviation root t d1 minus that's just this denominator this root t okay so that's your d1 and d2 now to now get your nd1 and nd2 when you get your d1 you use all this formula to get your d1 you now take your d1 to your table value okay there's a table value here normal distribution whatever you get as your d1 you take it to your table value here so if your d1 is greater than zero you just say 0 0.5 plus your table value okay if your d1 is less than zero it will be 0 0.5 minus your table value same for d2 also maybe you got your nd1 to be 0 0.0685 this 0 0.0685 is what you take to your table you take it as 0 0.06 under 0 0.00 okay on top see 0 0.06 can you see under 0 0.0 that's 0 0.239 okay so your table value is 0 0.239 so you want to know should i add 0 0.5 to it or should i say 0 0.5 minus table value 
because this one is greater than zero 0 0.0685 is greater than zero right so what you're going to do is that you say 0 0.5 minus that see i have a question but i'm not going to solve it though i'm not even going to solve it i'll put it on the screen question 22 will be bob has 100 million face value of debt in issue carrying five percent coupon with five years to maturity the company's current cost of debt is eight percent hmm? the fair value of the firm's total assets less current liabilities is 90 million that's what this one net asset li less liability they gave you this 90 million right they gave you the 100 million face value of debt with carrying five percent coupon bonds that's this they are giving you the details that you use to calculate your fair value of present value of cash flows of the bond right it has a monthly volatility that's the standard deviation what you need here of what eight percent that's 0 0.08 hmm? then inside the risk free rate this one is six percent this t is what five years now because it told that it's five years to maturity can you see so you can solve it by putting it into this and following what i have taught you